All right, it's Deborah Whitmer. Deborah Whitmer, she is the um, Vulnerable Populations Coordinator with Seattle's Human Services Office. Damn, I can't believe they have a department. Is working with community members to design the card and she coordinated the tabletop to test the draft version. She drew in members of the community who could give a real life test of the card and role players who convincingly played difficult roles. Wow. Man, this is pretty blatant, and I'm certain they have their own actors there, too, that are getting paid for this shit. I'm sure you're just, they're just throwing you in there as a guinea pig to help these guys out. That's crazy. People, if you're going in there, you better ask for money. If you're carrying around these stupid RFID chips and everything else, I would. I would even go there if I were you, to be honest. But if you're going there to find that information, yeah, man, you might want to start asking some of these people, especially Deborah Whitmer, who's actually in charge of coordinating these damn pee patches. It was two hours of hard work for everyone, and we learned a lot. Debriefing afterwards, we know we can work on improvements to the card, and we will need to look at how hubs handle people with communication barriers. Communication barriers. Okay, here's the communication barriers. It's called bullshitting you and telling you a lie. There's your communication barrier. That's a huge barrier when they tell you to fucking lies to people that don't know the truth. The use of the card is to capture the message. It's the only first part of helping someone. We will be working on this before. What is the card for anyway? Are we going to read their mind? Fucking crazy ass scientific bullshit that they got going. In June, we joined with the auxiliary communications team, ACS, for a joint training and practice session. Experienced ham and GMRS radio operators, which I, I would suggest that everybody picks up a ham radio at this point. All right, because the, the, I've already seen the towers are all in place, all the extra ones. Okay. So you, that's the only way you're going to get any information, and you better get batteries, and I'm not even sure if that's going to work. So good luck on the ham radio or anything else after that point. Batteries are your only option, and I don't think they'll work in an EMP. Newly licensed hams and hub members from across the experience spectrum first heard a presentation, presentation from Carl Leon uh, at NCKUW. Carl described how the hubs and AC, ACS work together in radio nets and how they are structured and controlled. <laughs> Let me just tell you what they're going to do. They're going to put these pee patches on people, and in an emergency situation, after everything's finished and everything's killed and everybody's fucked up, any survivors are going to be located by these stupid pee pips. How, how you like that? Don't wear these damn things. Don't wear these things, dude. Especially in, in, in an emergency. Because if you're looking for somebody to help you, you're only getting help by yourself or anybody around you. You're not getting help from these people. They're just trying to find you to put your ass in a FEMA camp. That's what those pee chips are for, pee, pee patches, the pedophile patch chip. He then gave tips on good voice protocols, how to pass the most accurate, clear, and concise messages. The last part of the class was a hands-on message passing session where the 35 participants broke up into four groups, which is an eight, okay? Three fives is a three sixes, by the way. Broke up into four groups and practiced passing messages back and forth. Well, there you go. Boy, that was some technological fucking breakthrough there, huh? That's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Passing messages back and forth to people, that's stupid unless it's a, it's a set message. Because the set message, if people are passing messages, they could change. That's dumb. The City of Seattle Disaster Skills Training. The City of Seattle continues to offer a series of different classes here on the next sessions they have set up. We also post all our classes on the website calendar. Register for all these www.seattle.gov slash emergency management and click on the upcoming events on the right side of that page to go to registration form. Disaster Book Club colon World War Z I just love how they throw the symbolism in. Wednesday, July 12th through 6th to 7.30pm location is at Southwest Branch Library and I gave you all these locations already. So these are just given, these are just reading stating them that but these are some extra places that are having training and skill practice and probably where all the skanks are going to be at. So it says, um, you're invited to join the Office of Emergency Management for June's Disaster Book Club event that's over with. And then you have one on July 19th at 6 to 9 p.m. in the Hiawatha Community Center, California Avenue, Southwest Seattle. Learn how to care for and respond to injuries after a major disaster. Then you got Light Search and Rescue. How do you like that one? Tuesday, August 15th. Hello, 6 to 8.30, location Kaplan International, 51 University, August 15th. They have a search and rescue, a light search and rescue. That's going to be a pre-run for the real deal. That's going to be at the Kaplan International, 
location, 51 University Street, Seattle. When a large disaster happens, first responders and the other city services may be overwhelmed. Transportation may be disrupted and communication may be difficult. It is vital that city residents are prepared to be self-sufficient during these disaster skills is a crucial part of the preparedness effort. This training provides an overview of light search and rescue skills, a basic rescuer safety. When first responders are overwhelmed, residents may apply some of these techniques to help them around in need. The workshop covers the following topics, rescuer safety, basic search techniques, basic rescue techniques, lifts, carries, and cribbing. Guys, there's also a disaster skills workshop at on August 22nd. 6 to 8 p.m. That's crucial because I believe that day to be a rough day. Magnolia Community Center, 2550. When a large disaster happens, first responders and other city services may be overwhelmed. There's your 822, by the way. Okay. When a large disaster, the transportation may be disrupted and communication may be difficult. Listen to what they're saying. This is They're giving us the information right here, obviously. Having knowledge of some key disaster skills is a crucial part of the preparedness effort. This workshop provides training on key skills needed after a disaster and more in-depth instruction on key preparedness actions. This workshop covers the following topics. Fire extinguisher use. Well, that ought to be interesting. Utility control. I like that one. Water storage and purification. I like that. So they're going to help you... (laughs) They're going to help you live after a disaster. No, they're not. Trust me. They don't want you to. They want you to go to FEMA. That's it. Disaster Skills Basic Aid, Tuesday, September 19th, 9 to 6, 8 p.m. Now we got one in September, baby. Location, Queen Anne Community Center, 1901 First Avenue, West Seattle, Washington, 98119. Learn how to care for and respond to injuries after a major disaster when 911 is overwhelmed or unavailable. This session provides practice on how to recognize and treat life-threatening conditions, on how to conduct a patient assessment, and how to create creatively or creati- creatively speaking English again. Use household items as first aid materials. Class does not meet requirements for certification. So there you have it. Our mailing address is Neighborhood Emergency Communications Network at 8014 Stroud Avenue North, Seattle, Washington, 98103. Okay. And again, all you got to do is go to this email. Seattle Emergency Hubs. Seattle Emergency Communication Hubs.com or you can go to the .gov that I gave you earlier. There it is, guys. Preparing for earthquake, EMP, and tsunami coming up in Seattle and they've been doing this for a while. So, I'm certain that someone here knows what's going on, guys. So reporting here for NC, uh, reporting here for Donnie Darko show. This is Chris Archer. Y'all have a good day and God bless us. We're always going to stay prepared with the Holy Spirit inside of us. It's not anywhere else, but here. Okay, the Holy Spirit probably will not be in your church. Okay, you can look for him all you want, but I'm assuming that Lucifer runs everything that goes on in that church because it is a business and it was created by him. So guys, again. Just get prepared spiritually. That's all it takes. Don't worry about anything else. You, the innocent, the Christians, God's people will inherit the earth eventually. Mark my words. You all have a good day.